in this video we're going to create this bar table we're going to assign material parameters that allow us to control the thickness the height and diameter as well as a material parameter for both the bar table top as well as the stand and we're going to look at how we go about doing this so let's go ahead and get started here the first thing we want to do is come up here to our new families and we're going to use the furniture template so I'm just gonna scroll down and grab our furniture template here and let's open that okay so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and follow the process that we've been using in the past videos and we're gonna set up some reference planes I'm gonna to come to my front elevation view and I'm just gonna come up here and give myself a reference plane that we're gonna label underside of table and one more for the top of our table now let's add a couple quick parameters for this I'm gonna use my aligned dimension and just come up from the reference level and select the underside of that table and let's drag a dimension string here I'm gonna select on that dimension string and add a parameter and I'm gonna call this bar table height and we'll click OK for that then I want to give us one more parameter we're just going to select the underside and what will be labeled as the top side and give ourselves a dimension here deselect out add another parameter and we're going to give this bar table thickness and we've got that so let's just flex these very quickly before we begin to model the elements the height I'm gonna give this around three foot and the thickness we'll just leave that four inches and click apply and you'll see our reference planes go ahead and make that modification now let's go ahead and draw this circular table that we're going to so I'm just gonna go down to my reference plane reference level if I come out to create and come down here to select I'm gonna select a reference plane now we're missing one step and that's why if you look on this list we don't see the reference planes that we just created so I'm gonna cancel out very quickly and come back to our elevation view let's make sure that we name these I'm gonna select the underside and I'm gonna come over here and name this bar table underside and I'm gonna select the top one bar table top side alright now that they're named we can actually create geometry using these reference planes but that's an important step so coming back to my floor plan view and back to create down here to set work plane now you'll see bar table underside and I'm going to select this reference plane and click OK so now the geometry that we begin to draw using our form tool is going to be placed on that table underside reference plane so I'm going to start my extrusion and we're going to do a circular table here and I'm just going to come out and I'm going to type two feet have a two foot radius on this table and as far as the depth the depth really is not relevant we can change it here to the four inches but we're gonna attach it to a reference plane anyway the last thing I want to do to make this table entirely parametric is I just want to come in here and I'm gonna give ourselves a diameter dimension and I'm just gonna snap that here in the sketch and then I want to select this and let's add a parameter bar table diameter now we can control even the diameter the size of this circular bar table as a parameter as well but it's important to do it in the sketch mode 
So now I'm going to click OK. And let's come right back out here to our front elevation view. And the last thing I want to do is make sure that we grab our grip and I want to snap this in place and lock this form to the reference plane that we have here as we've just done. Now if we come up to family types and change that height to two feet or four feet you see that our geometry is flexing with it. Okay so now let's just go ahead and create the support for this bar table stand that we have here and we're going to do that coming up here to create we're going to use our revolve command so I'm going to select that the next thing I want us to do is right now we're drawing the boundary line so we're right here in elevation we're actually drawing the profile that's going to be used for revolving I'm going to start up here at the top we'll come out here about an inch and a half and I'm just going to come down and replicate the profile that we're able to see from the table that we're trying to model there we are then I just need to make sure that this boundary line is a closed loop one so I completed that. Let's select this top piece and I'm just going to drag it up and bring it back down. But I want to lock it to the same reference plane as the underside of table. This is an important step to take if we want that support to continue to be attached to the underside of our table. So let's go ahead and click our check mark now we'll flex this table height once again I'm gonna bring it back down to three feet click apply and we can even go pretty high and we'll say a six foot stand and you can see that that support is continuing to remain attached to the bar table like we would like it to be so that's fine the next thing I want us to do is to go ahead and create some material parameters that we need. So I'm going to select our table extrusion for the table top and come out here on the properties menu and I just want to check this toggle over here outside of the by category field and we can add a parameter directly here. So I'm going to add a parameter and this is our t bar table material. I'm going to click OK here. And I'm going to repeat this, selecting our stand. Bar table stand material. Now we have a parameter in place to control each one of these. So if I come back to my 3D view, let's just go ahead and turn this realistic color right now you can see still represents that sort of chipboard material but let's go ahead and make the modifications so now that we've created those material parameters back up to family types for the bar stand gonna select on that it'll bring up our material browser and we're gonna go with a metal stand the steel paint finish, I'm going to select that from my Autodesk material library. Select my toggle to bring it into this document. If we select it now and click apply, over here in the material editor, I do want to check this box so that I can see that that material is taking effect even just from a shading display. And we'll click OK there. And then let's apply that you'll see that change take effect and then let's go ahead and do the same for our tabletop come back into our material editor 
we're going to use a wood finish. We'll go ahead and select that. We'll add it into this document. You'll see there's very few materials that are available in the family editor. So you'll end up importing quite a few materials depending on the complexity of the family you're creating. And I'm going to apply that. Remembering to check my use render appearance in shaded mode as well. And then let's apply that. So now we have a parameter in place for the materials as well as the dimension parameters that we needed. Let's go ahead and flex that bar diameter. Say we want a larger surface. I can change that to six feet. So you can see how powerful parameters can be. We can create many different family types from this menu, many different material tables as well. So I hope this video has been helpful in establishing this bar table that you'll need.